Hello everyone, my name is Sheffrey, and welcome back for episode 60 of the Satisfactory series here on YouTube. In this video, it's time to put the finishing touches on the supercomputer, computer, and circuit board factory. Just a handful more machines to get all the output we need for assembly director systems. At 10 per minute, we should have the 4,000 necessary in no time. This completes three of the four final parts we need. Thank you all for the support and help with the series so far. Let's get to playing games. Alright, here we are, part two of our supercomputer computer circuit board factory. I figured I'd save us all some time and just start it out over here at the old factory. Um, also, this is my second time recording this because I actually did this originally back at the main base. Came over here, uh, got started, and quickly realized I was not recording. Uh, so here we are, I'm doing it second time back at the main base. I did catch it thankfully really quickly. Um, so you guys didn't miss too much. The only thing I ended up doing was, uh, setting, we're setting up the lines to start feeding our massive copper sheet production. So we can turn this, the entirety of the second floor on, not just half of it. Uh, so I do have, if you remember from last time, we have one line, uh, that's going to come out here. Another one here of our copper ingots this is going to be a total of 1,241. 3 per minute. A little bit complicated to try and move correctly, but it's split perfectly into two. Um, and then, so the way it's going to come up is it comes up through here onto this logistics floor here. Each line feeds into a splitter. That splitter feeds one line, two lines, and then a merger. That merger is feeding the um, one little bit of copper sheet production I set up over there. But And then underneath, I have these are just the lines that connect um, each of these together because they weren't actually facing their same direction as I thought they were and I didn't want to have to turn them all around so I just ran it underneath and now um, each of these sucks up 320 copper ingots per minute and then you have just your little bit left over here so I'm going to actually set up the lift heads on the top part here but then we will be ready to go to turn this all on appreciate you guys coming back here I hope you enjoyed part one of this build it has been quite a journey putting this thing together we're still a decent ways out we are this is the third of four final space elevator parts as you can see i haven't put any actually into the space elevator yet we still gotta actually do that um i do already have a thousand uh nuclear uh, pasta ready to go they are just in storage ready to be put into the elevator itself I probably have about a thousand thermal propulsion rockets also over there ready to go. Um, today it's all about, we are going to be finishing off, what's it called? Assembly director systems, something like that. Um, so we're going to be taking the supercomputers, the computers and the circuit boards from here uh, for something. Let me double check what this is actually going to be. Okay, now I remember. So the circuit boards, the computers, those get mixed with our automated wiring, as well as our heavy modular frames, which all come from that general section over there. So we're going to be sending the circuit boards and the computers over there to get mixed up together. If you remember, we actually put that together uh, an episode or two ago. And then from there, we have the supercomputers are going to get mixed with the, those are going to make adaptive control units. The adaptive control units are going to get mixed with the supercomputers. And those are going to be making the assembly director system. This is one heck of a giant factory just for this, just for these assembly director systems. We did technically start almost everything from scratch. The only thing we're going to be bringing in is going to be, uh, Katerium, or sorry, um, crystal oscillators i'm going to be using the rest of them that i have from that build over there it actually ended up being the perfect amount i'm going to take 40 crystal oscillators from over there i'm going to turn them into 20 computers sorry i mean i'm going to turn the 40 crystal oscillators into 40 computers 20 computers to send over there and 20 computers are going to be used for making the supercomputers so let's jump into uh connecting this up now i should be able to just connect the belts up to here uh I take out the, the sink from here and the sink from here. We grab our belts. We'll bring it into position. All right, there we go. So we got copper ingots coming up now. So if I just go ahead and kick on the power to this section here, 
I should be able to just connect it from... Let's connect it over here. I actually got to connect the, the rest of the machines. All right, copper ingots are flying around into the machines, so we'll let that uh, run for a bit, and those can get backed up while we start on to the next portion of the factory, which we're now graduating from constructors into assemblers. So we're going to be going up a floor here. While that does its thing, we're going to start off by doing... Let's see what we need first. Okay, so on this back side here, I think I'm going to do the assemblers for the silicon circuit board i don't actually think i'll have enough room up here for everything so i'll probably end up adding a little bit more roof space um but i'll start with the assemblers we do have a blueprint that we can use our three blueprint our three assembler blueprint there it is right there so for the alternate recipe silicon circuit board we're going to be taking the silica from below and then a bunch of copper sheets I need exactly 19 uh, circuit boards, or sorry, exactly 19 assemblers. I feel like I hear like a little bit of fuzz through the microphone every now and then. It's, uh, if, if you also hear that, I apologize. Um, but yeah, let's set up our 19 assemblers here. Hey, you guys remember when I said there was not enough room? There is not enough room. That's 15 assemblers and I need 19. Uh, so I think maybe what we'll do then is, because I also need to fit, what else do I need up here? I need another 14, 15, another, another 15 assemblers. So, oh, actually maybe I'll leave this then. This could be the crystal computers. And then I'll just do the 19, maybe I'll split it into, I'll do it in like two groups of 10, maybe? That might work. Yeah, I'm going to do two groups of 10 assembler, we'll do like one extra assembler for the circuit boards, um, and then that way they could just feed directly into here. So I will grab the blueprint one more time. Make sure it's facing. I want them running down this direction. There you go. I'm, I'm just shoving it in a little. I know I should keep it this way for space, but if I do it here, I can just run it directly into the bottom here. Um, and this is where some of the circuit boards are going. So actually, will that work? I do need to, I need to split them too. Actually, yeah, it's fine. I think what I'll do is I will, because I need these split into three groups and one of the groups needs to be exactly a hundred. So I think I'll have like one, um, like I'll, I'll split off a hundred to do their own thing and then I'll just split the other ones the way they need to go. So here we can do our first group of 10. Okay. So I need, uh, a group of a hundred circuit boards, like that's going to be sent over there. And then I need 30 and 106.67. So... Probably just do the 136.67 as one group and then do 100 as the other. There we go. So if I have 10 assemblers down and they each make 12 and a half, that makes 125 per minute. So I need. One thirty six point six seven. I need 11.67 per minute. Okay, so what I'll do then is I'll do a second group of 10 going down this side. I'll split off. I'll, I'll, I'll do some like... I'll do some down clocking on it to where the first nine make the hundred that I need. And then the last one, the tenth one, puts out that last 11.67 per minute. And I'll just loop the merger around to this side. 
and I'll merge in with this group. And yeah, technically what I could even do is the circuit boards that come out of here and get connected into this line, I could connect the end of this line to the manufacturer and it'll just be like one big long loop of, uh, of filling things. And that should probably, I mean, it'll take a long time to get backed up, but it should work. So yeah, let me go ahead and copy paste this right next to it. Um, I'll connect up the belts and the power while I wait for the sun to come up and then we'll regroup in the morning. All right, welcome back. It is the morning. I've got everything kind of set up here now. So we got all our inputs and everything. I did the double, I've got double the uh, assemblers here. So all the green ones here, these nine, are all set to 11.111 per minute. Um, this will give you a total of 100 per minute. That's going to go, that, I just sent it down below for now. I haven't actually hooked it up to anything. Um, that is the 100 circuit boards we're going to need to send over there at some point. And then the rest of them are set to, uh, this one's set to 11.67. And it joins in with the rest of them over here. And these ones are all supposed to be set to normal. I just haven't actually set them up yet. Yeah, there we go. So we got all our assemblers set up here. Uh, I did add a drone port because I'm just going to do it the lazy way where how I'm going to bring the crystal oscillators over. Um, they're currently being brought back to the main base. I'll just, I have so many drones over there not doing anything. I'll just get one of them to bring the crystal oscillators over to here. Um, so that's hooked into there. So that means that this line of the crystal computer is actually ready to go. And you want to make sure you down clock all of these to 2.667 per minute. Um, or you can use the 40 divided by 15. I need 40 computers total. Uh, and then it's going to, if you did it differently, you could have it split into two perfect lines. But uh, uh, I mean, it still will. But I'm so I'm merging them all and then I'm splitting it, which is kind of redundant. But um it's just saving me space because I put it so tight to the back end here. So this will be a line of 20 and this will be a line of 20. So now we can go ahead and start to add in the next group of machines. Um, the group, uh, like the little bit, these will be a little bit extra circuit boards coming out of the back here. Like I said, that's going to go to manufacturers making high speed connectors. And we do have everything for that. That is quick wire, cable and circuit boards. So circuit boards from here, quick wire and cable from the floor below. So let's go ahead and throw in uh, eight manufacturers with the three input side. We've got our blueprint here. Manufacturer three input side. I'll have to bring it back a little bit because I need to make sure it actually fits. So we're going to need eight of these. One, two, three. Four, five, six. No. Dang. Uh, let's do two groups of four. Make sure we got enough space to add in. Oops. Where'd it go? Oh, there we go. Uh, make sure we add enough space or leave enough space to add a merger on the back there. Uh, you could do it, but it'd be real tight. So I'm just going to shift it back like two. That should be fine. Okay, there we go. So we got our eight manufacturers. What I'm actually going to do is I'm going to need to add a splitter here. And then these extra circuit boards will loop around like this and feed the eight manufacturers. So you can see when we set up the high speed connector here, there they are. There you go. So we're going to be setting these all to high speed connectors. You don't have to do any underclocking or overclocking. You need exactly uh, 
eight manufacturers all doing 3.75 3.75 times eight is 30 beautiful and i need 30 high speed connectors for my supercomputers so the cable and the quick wire should be pretty easy but the way i'm going to do it is i'm going to turn the front inputs here but an easier way of actually setting that up so i don't have to um redo everything i'm going to set these belts up first so i have something to snap the uh splitters to so just like that now i'm going to oh, now i'm going to get rid of the splitters Take them off like that. I think I do have to redo the lifts anyway, but that's okay. Um, at least I wanted to stack the lifts this way. So I want to turn them, make sure the output, make sure I'm connected to the belt here. I want the input coming from down here. So same with that one. Just gonna link those up like that. Make sure you turn and have the orange facing towards you. Then yeah, I'll probably have to redo lifts I doubt those are actually still connected. There we go. So now that'll allow me to put some floor holes here on the back. I'll have a much easier time doing clean inputs this way. So I want to get uh, I want to get these a lot of these machines turned on so we can kind of get some of this stuff up and running since some of this needs to feed some of the other machines and that's going to take when I do that that usually takes a little while to get things uh, settled so I'm just waiting a little bit longer on the copper sheets to balance themselves out and then I think we can jump into hooking some of these up we're gonna be bringing uh, copper sheets up here silica quick wire um, the circuit boards, or sorry, the, the circuit boards, that, or the quick wire doesn't actually come up here. Um, oh wait, yes it does. Quick wire comes over here. Quick wire comes over here, cables. We're going to be bringing all sorts of things up, but uh, while I wait for that to balance out, I think what I'll do is I'll run back to base, and I will send a drone uh, dedicated to this port. So I'm actually, I'm going to have to turn this on first, because otherwise I don't think it actually recognizes it as a port. Or we're gonna go just connect this in like this. There we go. So that actually is power. Um, and then we can connect the rest of it up to that pole, actually. Um, so, yeah, like I said, I'm gonna run back to base. I'm gonna send uh, the 40 crystal oscillators over here. I think I'm sending them back to base. If I'm not, I'll have to run over there first. Um, and then we will start to. We'll belt up the uh, the quick wire, the cable, and the silica because I think that's pretty much that stuff's pretty much ready to go. Um, I mainly have to turn these on first because the circuit boards need to feed all the other machines up here. So the first thing we're going to bring up is copper sheets and silica. All right, I got some crystal oscillators coming on over here via drone. We got our um, silica coming up top here. So now I just need to hook up these copper sheets. Um, I did run just a quick little, so basically what it is, is you got a splitter coming in here for your silica, splitter coming in here for your copper sheets, and we just got to hook these up from down below. We can get rid of this here awesome sink, cut that away, and then we're going to bring this down to there, Hook that up like that, and even though they're still not fully backed up yet, they'll get there. Um, that'll at least start our uh, production up top here, and we can finally turn the power onto these things. Let me grab a power cable here somewhere. And we'll just connect into this power line right there. That should basically turn everybody on. Uh, so if I see a red, that means I probably just didn't set it. Or it's this one where it's the extra one, and I just didn't hook it up to power. There we go. So that'll start pumping out our circuit boards. These green ones are going to get backed up because I don't have an awesome sink hooked up to this right now. Uh, I mean, I suppose I could just kind of squeeze one in down below and take it out later, but I'm not going to be too, too worried about that, I don't think, um, because it should just kind of help everything else balance out. And honestly, by the time 
I get to, uh, like by the time this gets backed up, I should be able to, I should have things hooked up and ready to go. Sorry, I definitely made a whoopsie when I was setting up these manufacturers because each of these needs 210 quick wire per minute and obviously that's not going to work. So you're going to have to feed, and I have three lines, so this is where it's going to get a little weird. Um, but basically, I'm going to feed two of these each, so it would be 420 uh, going to each set. Um, and I have three, and that means I need four lines. I have three lines. So essentially what I'm going to do is I'm going to hook up um, a line to a set of two and then off the end of it, or down below actually, I'll add in a smart splitter onto each one and that'll send out all the overflow to then fill up the last two. Pretty sure that should work. Uh, the only thing that really sucks is I have to turn... Um, the splitters. Sorry, I had a little brain fart there. I have to turn the splitters for some of these so that I can actually hook up the um, lines because uh, in here, obviously, there's not really enough room to fit anything else in here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to stack up these like three. And I'm going to turn this one as well and put a floor hole here. And that way I'm not uh, interfering with everything else. Okay, there we go. Now I have four... Oh, that's not, I made way too high. Now I have four floor holes... To spread the quick wire between. The cable is fine though. The cable can uh, also just be like a singular line coming down. It's not a big deal. Okay, yeah, there. Sorry about any confusion on that. That was uh, definitely a mistake on my behalf. I was not paying attention to my build guide over here. So now we can actually bring up the cables. We're going to go ahead and take this out through here. Put in our uh, lift. Figure out where it is. There we go. Oh, that lift went in in the wrong direction. There we go. So now the cables can start flying up. I want to make sure I get those set up before I forget where things are actually supposed to be going. So these two front ones on the lower level, which would be this one and this one. And then if I just put a splitter in between them, Line it up with the hole. Put in your belts, and there's your cable feed. That should start filling in on those. They'll give us the cable. We're still waiting a long time on circuit boards because I really need to get the uh, and to get the copper sheet situation. Um, I need to get that backed up. I might go down and turn a few machines off here and there just to get things get things rolling. Um, I mean, as everything gets backed up, it'll kind of balance itself out anyway. We're also missing some crystal oscillators, which I think I may have to... Uh, like I guess I might just turn these off up here, let the crystal oscillators kind of bank up um, into, their, into their machines. Because bringing in 40 per minute is like a little difficult. Like it's timing of the drone and everything. So, I mean, it technically says it's only bringing 20 per minute right now, but we'll get that fixed. Okay, there we go. Sorry to skip ahead. I, just, I was really having a hard time trying to take all my brain power and actually put this together. So, we have the three. These are the lines of quick wire coming up. So, we have the three. They feed into a smart splitter. And they're all the same. The center output is, or whatever, is connected to the lift. That's your any undefined. So once those get backed up, they will then send all their overflow to fill the other system. So it will be dependent on six of them getting backed up before all eight can get backed up. But this seems to me like the least complicated way of turning three lines into four. So I think that should work. Um, we'll revisit it towards the end of the episode if we need to. Uh, we may need to, but we'll, we'll see. 
Um, but yeah, at least for now that gets the quick wire hooked up to our high speed connectors. So let's go ahead and hook those lines up because we are waiting. We got cable in here already. We got circuit boards. We are ready to turn these bad boys on. We just got to get this quick wire running up here. So we're going to go ahead and connect. We got the holes set up, ready to go. We're just going to go ahead and take out the awesome sinks here. I'll take out the little bit of uh, belting we've got here and then we'll put in some lifts. It's fine. I'm actually, before I let these get hooked up, I'm actually going to let these back up a little bit because since Quickwire can stack all over to 500, it, it would take a little bit for me to, to send enough Quickwire up there. So I'll let those just kind of back up a little bit first. Or actually full on hook them up. Um, from here, we need to add in the AI limiter. Like while I wait for that, I'll just get a little backed up. I'll do the AI limiters. Um, and I think that was only like four. Yeah, only four assemblers. This one's pretty straightforward. And we're going to squeeze that bad boy right in here with one extra here on the very end. If it'll let me come on, there we go. Thank you. So all four of these doing AI limiters. This one's super easy because this one doesn't have to do any sort of like underclocking, overclocking, no crazy splitting, nothing like that. It's literally just, you're going to hook up the, oops, we're going to select our AI limiters. You're going to bring up the copper sheets and the quick wire from down below and we're ready to go. There we go. We got our four AI limiters, assemblers. Now we're just going to do some floor holes, get these filled in. Not reversed anymore. So we'll connect those in just like that. And now we'll just go down below. I have the lift head or I've got the holes at least here ready to go. So where are these going to line up with? Um, that's a bit of a weird one. Maybe I'll do that one for the one over there. And this one we can just do like a loop around type thing. So that can be the quick wire, and then this one will be the copper sheets. Okay, and with those AI limiters being automated, we are coming down to the final part. Oh my god, this platform is actually... I almost added more room and I actually don't need to. Um, I just need to add six more manufacturers. I'll probably just do them more here towards the back, because I, I, I know I have enough room back here. So I'll line them up. I don't know why I was going to do that without a <laughs> blueprint. Um, this one, you need four inputs because you need computers, high speed connectors, AI limiters, and plastic. So we're going to go ahead. Hey, finally, we're going to be using the plastic. So I need six of these. We're going to go one, two, three, four, nope, four, five, and six. Perfect. We got those all in there. You actually need to down clock one in the end. All we're doing here is 10. And uh, right now we make a little bit more than that. Okay, so the one on the very end, you're going to down clock to make 0 0.625 per minute. There we go. And then the rest are just all normal. All right, there we go. We got it all belted up in our inputs. I just, I did three floor holes because three things will come from underneath the plastic, the plastic, the computer and the AI limiters, and then the high speed connectors literally just come from right here. So I just did a lift right here. Um, let's take this out for now. I don't really think it actually matters because I'm not really been seeing any high speed connectors coming out of here. Uh, mainly because we need the quick wire. And I haven't finished hooking those up yet. So let's go ahead and finish hooking up the quick wire lines now. As I said I was going to do earlier. Just wanted them to get a little backed up. Get a little extra quick wire in that system. Go ahead and connect. Please. There we go. So now we're sending a bunch of quick wire. There's an auto save coming here. So I'm just going to have to wait a few minutes before we actually keep going. 
Um, while it happens, if you're still here and you're still hanging out with me, if you want to come and test out some of the Mario Kart tracks that are going to be used on the 1,000 subscriber celebration live stream, um, I feel like I should probably stop calling it Mario Kart. Nintendo might sue me. Uh, they're basically obstacle cart, or obstacle course cart races. Um, I have one ready to go. It's in the Discord. If you guys want to come in and test it out, let me know what you think. Maybe drop some ideas on some more obstacle stuff I could add in. Um, I think this is a really cool idea going forward. I mean, I've said before, I'm sure it's someone with a lot of like other people with like really good creativity and better building skills than what I have. And definitely take this idea and run with it but i just kind of want to get the idea out there because i've really seen anyone doing it yet okay i've got most of the things balanced out now to the point where i can actually turn these on because i'm pretty sure i didn't have these connected to power this whole time a whoopsie on my part oops hey when that happens And that should be, I know I haven't updated the to-do list in a little bit, so that should be, we got our circuit boards and our high-speed connectors. We have our crystal computers and our AI limiters. And we have our supercomputers. So we'll just go. Magic. Um, so now is the actual, you know, the real, the real fun, where we get to turn a bunch of these things into the actual uh assembly director system the only thing i've left to do is i need to bring over the plastic which i do have the um belt already hooked up and everything to go it's just connected to a big lift along the back there so all i actually needed to do is avoid this radiation come over here and we need to actually hook up the plastic we need to send on over to the rest of the factory all right, I did. I already, already have it uh, hooked up, separated. We needed 280 plastic per minute. So you got 200 from here, and then you got 80 coming from here. That means this line is the 280 line. I will disconnect this. Put in a floor hole just because. There you go. We are now sending plastic on over to the main factory. Might take a few minutes for it to actually get there, but that's okay. Uh, sending 280, that'll carry on all the way down through there. And that'll finally get away from the radiation. That'll finally bring us to the end of the actual base components we need for the build. What's happening down here? Oh, we got, we got too much stuff. We're too beefed out. We got too much backup going on. It's coming all the way down here. Uh, that's a, that's okay. We'll figure. We'll get this like cleaned out. Like once this is all up and operating in its proper fashion. Yeah, I think everyone's just starting to get backed up now because the machines up here weren't running in their hundred percent efficiency. But I'm seeing a lot more green now. And these we're just waiting. I mean, we'll still probably be waiting a couple minutes for the plastic actually. Oh, never mind. Plastic is here, and I just forgot to actually connect it. Whoops. There we go. There's the plastic. Which means these should start running now, which means I actually need to put the mergers on the back. Uh, might as well send them this way, because they're going to go over here anyway, so... All right, let's get the real, the real fun started now, shall we? So we need to bring a hundred circuit boards, twenty computers, and ten supercomputers. And I'm not about to run three belts over when I could just run one. It's going to be a sushi belt. Yes, I know. I'm very sorry. Uh, I'm just going to run the one over, and then I'll put in a smart splitter when we get it because it's three items. I'll put in a smart splitter when we get over there, and they'll set off everything accordingly. So let me just build like a little... Where does everybody end up? We'll probably end up th having things down below, right? So... Alright, we got a nice big long conveyor belt in the sky. 
Uh, I'm definitely going to try and avoid doing stuff like this in my 1.0 playthrough. Um, but especially since at this point, I definitely can't be doing any sort of cosmetics or it's just going to make my game crash. Um, I'm more about the functionality, make thing, making sure everything works and a good idea for how to set up some of these systems for 1.0. Um, I think one thing that's obviously definitely going to change is some of the recipes and some of the lay, like some of the spots I've done these layouts in, but why is everything stopped right here? Oh, I just have ghost items. That's why. So we have the smart splitter right here. So we're going to set, uh, let's go supercomputer on, actually, no, I think supercomputer has to go to the right. And then we'll do computer and circuit boards. There we go. So supercomputer is coming from the right and supercomputer goes into, I believe goes all the way over here. I'm remembering correctly. Yes, so we're going to send the supercomputers on this side. You could flip all your um, things around and send a belt going down that way on the top. But uh, instead of putting in all that work, I'm just going to take off the top one here. Turn it so it's facing like that. So I'm using floor holes anyway. Put the lifts back in. We go and then we'll just slide a floor hole in for those and then should connect those up to that splitter or smart splitter i mean there we go so fingers crossed this is going to work so we got left circuit boards middle of computers right is supercomputers. so hopefully this sushi belt works um and then what's the last what's the final one we need here the automated wiring so that's actually going to be coming from over there. We're going to run a little belt from over there as well to hook up here, and then we should be good to go. I'm actually just going to turn on the power to all these now just so the items will actually start filling up into the system. Otherwise, things might get a little backed up and wrecked. There we go. That way I also know that everything's actually working. So we got heavy module frames coming in, circuit boards, and computers all coming in. So we just got to bring over that automated wiring. And that'll put out the adaptive control units, which can then join the supercomputers. We'll finally have assembly director systems all finished up. So let's just quickly, before the sun goes down and gets all dark on us, and put the finishing touches on here, we're just going to bring uh, a belt over of the bits I need from here. Where was I actually making them? Are they right here on the end? Perfect. Okay, so we're going to take all this automated wiring. And we are going to send it all the way over to that building. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put a little uh, little floor hole here. And then from underneath, I'm going to hook this up and over. Okay, everybody's hooked up now. We got a belt. I just uh, put a belt running underneath there. I was going to do, try and do something maybe like a little cooler or nicer looking. But anytime I go down in that general vicinity, it lags so hard for me that I was like, you know what? Just get it in, get it done, and get back to the main point of the actual building. Um, it's crazy how like up here it doesn't lag for me, but down there it really does. So anyway, that means we now have everything all actually hooked up properly here. Is this another ghost item or is this belt not connected? Let's just be another good like ghost looking. Actually, those may not even be there. I don't think those are there. That's a, that's a real ghost item. It's pretending it's there when it's not. Um, okay, so what do we need? Oh yeah, so we're just waiting on the automated wiring at this point. And that'll give us the adaptive control units. The automated wiring is now on its way over. It'll just be a few minutes before it actually gets here. Oh, 
I actually, I still need to hook it. This is, so this is the belt of the automated wire and I actually need to hook those up into the system. Whoopsie. So I'll do that. And then, uh, that, that pretty much brings us to the end of the build, including the assembly director system. So I'm like, while I wait for night to pass, I'll just run that belt over and then I'll come back in the daytime once we get some automated wiring in here and we should be a little bit more set up um, to pump these out because I want to at least be able to be like, hey, look, it's actually working. I don't want to, you know, lead you guys down a path of my own mistakes. So, yeah, we'll do the belt and then we'll regroup to make sure all the machines are working. Okay, so I unintentionally let this run for a few hours now. Um, and it seems to all be working out properly as far as I can tell. It's all balanced out correctly. Um, yeah, I just had to empty out like a couple of, a couple of machines were, were too backed up and they're like, they just weren't able to pump things out fast enough. So I just had to take a, take a few things out, throw them in the trash or into the sink. Um, if you're wondering why this was run unintentionally for a few hours, it's because I discovered my super aluminum factory was having some issues which uh, actually caused a ripple effect to multiple other factories across the world so it was one of the reasons why my power was kind of like um here i'll show you on the power pole here the like the power difference um between like my consumption and my max consumption there was like a really big gap and i was like well that means something's wrong because um a uh, little gap like this is just from like all the vehicles, um, all the particle accelerators that we have running. And there's probably a couple other machines around the world. Like there's probably a couple miners and water extractors that are going in and out that causes the, uh, the big differential. But if there's like a really big gap, then, you know, like a whole factory is out. So I had to go and fix all that. It was a lot of fun. Um, it was basically... It was, uh, I think it was my aluminum scrap refiners weren't working properly, which just caused the ripple effect across that entire factory. And then also a ripple effect across a bunch of other factories too. So fun times. Um, but anyway, so now we can go ahead and say that, uh, we are basically all done. Um, I'll just, uh, go over a little recap again. We are all done for the, um, assembly director systems we've got all our refiners down here we're doing copper and caterium and then you're coming up here it's a lot of quick wire um you got silica being made here just lots and lots of constructors all across this floor kind of cool to see all the parts flying around like this um i'm looking i'm really looking forward to 1.0 hopefully there's they haven't really talked about the optimizations much in a while but i've got my fingers crossed that it'll really help me get back to doing like cosmetic stuff um, in 1.0 because I mean as functional as these factories are they're just floating platforms in the sky um, I don't really want to do that uh, going for especially with like the long-term playthrough that we're gonna do in 1.0 so things are definitely going to be changing going forward so just be aware of that um, things are gonna be going a lot slower in 1.0 for sure i'm going to be really really taking my time enjoying myself checking out all the new stuff um you probably won't see me fly i'll i'll still have flying enabled for doing like my intro videos and stuff um but you probably won't you'll i'm gonna go back to my roots as we were doing before with uh with no flying um i mean until we get like the jetpack and stuff obviously um, I don't want to use the hyper tube cannons anymore. I want to start using like more vehicles and stuff to get around. Uh, speaking of getting around, here is our giant plastic plant that we got up and running last time. I think the only, like they're working no problem. The only thing that's uh, in and out still, yeah, is the uh, petroleum coke. But since we're not using this for anything, that's really not a big deal. These will balance out eventually. They'll just take quite some time. Uh, I'm also really glad we were firing up the factory as we went along because if we didn't then this would have taken even longer to get all backed up and worked out so um, it seems like everything's running at least now we'll just go on over do one last double check 
or yellow lights, but everything seems green. Everything seems like it's been green for a while. Um, except for some of the refineries down here, they have too many ingots in them. I think I either need to go back in here and adjust some numbers or just pull a couple or like pull a little bit of Caterium out. Um, and the same thing with the copper too. Like the copper just seems, it seems like it's overproducing right now. I'm not really sure why, but uh, we'll get that, we'll get that all balanced out. Um, that's not really a, an issue in the factory. Everything else has been running just fine. So if we come on over here to what was our, um, I mean, this factory didn't have to be as big as it is. This was our heavy modular frames, no alternate recipe. Uh, project which was a lot of fun but a lot of work as you can see this is uh, quite a large build um, and I do have things again in here I seem to be overproducing so there's a few things that need to be uh, pulled out of machines just to get uh, some of these back in because the belts just ended up getting too full as I was backing things up and if you let them get too full well then they never really back they never really balance out properly um, See, I'll, I'll end up pulling just a couple things that are there to get them going back in their working order. But everything's still working over here um, decently well, which has been really nice. Uh, I was afraid that something would go wrong in this factory. And it would be hard to figure out because this is probably... This one's up there with uh, some of the biggest, like, singular item output factories. Um, I mean, this one had a lot of constructors, but... I mean, even still, like, these builds were a lot easier because they're really, like, it's just a lot of cobbler. It's all, you're, all, it's all you're making down there. I do look forward to the recipe change for heavy modular frames, though. Anyway, um, I'm wasting so much of your time here at the end. So here is the manufacturers doing all our adaptive control units. Um, they're getting fed from that factory over there because you got the circuit boards, the computers. You got the heavy modular frames coming from right over here and you have the uh, automated wiring coming from that factory over there making 150 automated wiring was such a pain in the butt um, but yeah I mean everything over here still seems like it has green lights seem to be fairly balanced out and I'm filling up on our adaptive or geez uh, assembly director systems uh, we're getting, we need 4,000 of these so it's gonna take a little while. I mean, they only stack in groups of 50. So what? We have 4,000 divided by 50. How many stacks is that? 80. So I mean, that's basically these two, I think. Now I'll have, I think I'll have to put a third one on top just to just to totally fill it up. But anyway, um, yeah, I think that'll pretty much bring us to the end of today's episode. It's not going to be. As long as the first one was the first one was you know getting our our base lines of everything set up um, you like I mentioned before too uh, you don't have to put the water pumps up there if you don't want they can go down here but uh, you know always wanted to try that little water tower technique people have told me about so you know I know we're we're pretty much coming to the end of the series I have one uh, build left after this for the magnetic field generators I believe they're called um, and that's pretty much going to be it for, uh, like the space elevator and it'll bring this world pretty much to an end. You'll see me do a couple things, uh, probably do a couple more things on this world. Uh, I also plan on starting a fresh, uh, save, uh, just in like create quote unquote creative mode, um, so that I can test out building some other things that I just either don't have room for left in this world or I just I really just want performance back so um, I'll probably drop it down to one episode of satisfactory a week here pretty soon up until release and then when release comes out back into satisfactory baby um, so keep your eye out for some other game videos coming out here soon uh, I know I've been gifted a few lately from you guys. If, if you want to see me put out a video of a game I don't have, uh, you can always gift it to me on Steam, and I'll do my best to make a video around it. We got some farming simulator coming out. We got some this like space uh, survival game, uh, Forever Sky. I can't remember the can't remember the the name of it now. Um, 
and like one I think another one's called like one human or something like got a bunch of stuff to, uh, to do and try out and maybe some rimworld thrown in there as well at some point yeah I really appreciate you guys being here and supporting the channel we just passed 900 subscribers so we're on our way up to uh, that thousand mark where we can play the uh, Mario Kart world which you know what I think if you're still here at the end of the video I'll give you guys a little bonus I'll show off a little bit of it here at the end so let me just save this one really quick and we'll hop over to the Mario Kart world. All right, welcome to my Mario Kart world. So this was uh, just like a, I only have the one course in here so far. I was gonna build like a really, really, really big long one around the map. And then I was like, no, I feel like it'd actually be better if we do like just a bunch of smaller ones. And then, so my ultimate plan is like release this map to the public for people to download it. Um, although you, I'll, I'll throw this little tester track into the Google Drive so you guys can test it now if you want. Let me know what you think. Um, so the reason I went with the factory carts, one is they're a lot of fun. Two, they don't actually lose speed when they're going up or down. Like their, their speed doesn't um, go down when they're going up ramps. And uh, they also, yeah, they have no fuel so and no fuel source. So they're kind of like the ultimate racing car in this. So. I'm going to design it for, like, you got four. I do have, like, spots enough for, like, obviously more than four cars. Uh, if you can, like, mod it to have multiplayer with more than four people. Uh, I don't know why I have this car here because this car actually won't work on this track, as you'll see here in just a minute. Um, but yeah, you guys can uh, feel free to hop in here, either by yourself or with some friends. Uh, give, it a little, give it a little test run. Um, let me know what you think. Um, if you have any... Jesus. If you have any ideas of like some more obstacles and stuff that I could add, um, some like track ideas, uh, you guys can let me know in the comments or hop into the discord. Let me know. Um, the whole idea with this was that, you know, I'm probably not, uh, the greatest person to be did. Like, I'm sure there's people out there that are way more skilled in, um, I still need to add a bunch more to this track too. Uh, there's probably a whole bunch more people out there that are more talented than me in terms of like building and creativity and, and they can really take this idea and run with it. Um, I really just want to get the idea out there so that, uh, you know, um, people can try it out and, you know, maybe make their own tracks if they're interested. Just start like a new cool thing. So if, if anyone ever played like um, CSGO and you did like CSGO surfing, um, a friend of mine actually was the original creator of that. Um, like that whole concept like he didn't make every map but like he created the concept and people just kind of took it and ran with it so you know I'm hoping maybe something similar can happen here where people can take this idea of little kart racing and satisfactory and and run with it and oh here's a here's a weird part it's uh, it's really hard to see this part coming too which is actually like makes it even crazier and there's like a jump here um, should you not be able to make that jump that's what that little lower part is where you can like drive back up again and then you're going to come down here into a ramp section um there's a few parts that are like still open and don't have like many obstacles that i might fill in with some other things and then i'm probably going to put in some more signs and some more like markings just to make it like a little more clear about some spots uh there's a few like that where it's like it, depending on if you go left or right you'll actually get a different um track layout um i don't know what like which one is like the most beneficial um i like these like little catch basins that i made so like no matter what speed you're going you'll just kind of fall down into the box and you can go from there but yeah this is why i like the carts because even going on this like steep incline like they still go their max speed so it's been really good You're going to come up the stairway to heaven here, all the way up here. And then you can go left to right. There'll be some signs here in the future. Uh, right is just straight and into a tight right turn. And then the other one, you go up and down. So yeah, there might be some like speed. Um, there's probably like some better lines you can take. I think that's a really cool thing about this race too, is, you know, it depends on, on which way you go. I hope maybe one day someone who's really good at modding um can maybe figure out how to add like a uh, lap assist like a lap counter system um and like turn it into like an actual race mode i think it'd be really cool 
Uh, so right here, you're actually coming up to my favorite part of the map. I need a sign here that says go slow. Oh, I still miss them. I think I may push them forward a little bit or adjust how they are. So you got the launch pads right there that do affect vehicles. And I've tested this many times. Um, you will always land in this general area if you, if you hit those uh, launch pads. Uh, the only problem I've had is like actually hitting them every time. But yeah, I want to I do more stuff like that because I think things like that are really cool. Uh, and then more... I just want to add like more obstacles. I think maybe I'm going to add in some like pipes. Um, I even had the idea the other day. I haven't, I haven't done, the, done this one yet. But uh, I was going to take like the idea similar to Fall Guys where like you're... Or I mean lots of obstacle course races where you like have to like run along... Like a, like a pipe or a pole or something like that. I want to see if maybe I can get the, the carts to like drive along a pipe. Like really carefully. Like, I don't know. Just just weird things like that I want to play with going forward. Um, trying this out and coming up with more ideas of things we can do. But yeah, that's, uh, that's a full lap in the Mario Kart track that I've got so far. Like I said, if you want to download it and try it out for yourself. Um, or if, you know, just from watching this, you maybe have some cool ideas that I can Im implement. Um, and then I'm also going to be this. So this is the thousand subscriber celebration ideas. We have tracks like this. So I'm going to build a whole bunch more just kind of spread out across the map. Obviously, maybe this is a fresh world. I've only, only did the, uh, the one here in the, in the green, uh, green fields biome. And then it also kind of goes a little bit into the, the pink forest there. But I think this is still technically all the same biome anyway. Um, and then we'll do some more. We'll do some uh, ones up in like the other biomes and then like all the other diff like where there's like really cool landmarks and stuff on the map. Like I like this one because I took it as you guys saw we came like up went down into the little pit there and then kind of came up through the archway uh, around some rocks here um, and then through like the big arch here. So I'm trying to like implement a lot of like the natural architecture from the world. Um, but yeah, it's, I think this is going to be a lot of fun, especially with like more people. Like the more people I think you can get in these races would be absolutely hilarious. I think if you could get like 12 people in a race, that would just be the funniest, some of the funniest um, stuff you'd ever see. So I hope this idea kind of takes off. I hope people run with it. Um, you know, and I appreciate you guys uh, supporting me and my shenanigans. So uh, thank you very much again. If you want to try it out, um, download it in the Google Drive or come hop in the Discord. We can try it out together. Uh, but other than that, I'll see you guys in the next episode.